Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee doing another DIY project. And what I'm planning on doing is installing a um, an ice maker and fresh water uh, line to the back of a new fridge that I've bought. So uh, here's the fridge over here. It's a big uh, KitchenAid there. And... Uh, what I've done is I've brought fresh water, I've brought cold water from the basement up to that spot there with that half inch PEX line. Now you don't have to do that, you don't have to bring it that close because this kit and most kits come with 25 feet of line, you see that? So with that 25 feet of line you basically, you want a good 6 feet to coil up behind the fridge but that means you can access your water from about 19 feet away because here's that coiled uh, pipe that uh, that ends up attaching to your fresh water line and into the the fridge now the principle is really simple I've never done it before so you're gonna learn as I learn but the principle is fairly simple simple you got this PEX line right here and you're gonna take this uh, this valve now this system is designed so that you don't have to turn the water off when you install it. So that's kind of neat and I hope it works because if not I'm going to make a big mess. But what you do is you just uh, you set this valve piece on like this and you clamp it on using this clamp and the screws like so. Yo. Okay, let's try that again. You put this in like this, screw that in. You tighten down both sides on this, and then you can see it's actually there's a rubber washer in there, and that, that's what gives you the seal. And then once you've tightened it down to where you're you're uh, tight but not squashing the pipe, then you screw down the valve here. And what it does is the valve itself lowers this little piercing needle. You'll see it just come out of the rubber washer here in a sec. You see that needle there? You can barely see it because the washer is actually being pushed out as well. But See that sharp little needle there? That ends up pushing into the PEX pipe and piercing it. It also closes the valve so water doesn't come shooting out. But then once you've got it pierced all the way, then you just open it up and water comes through. So that's the plan. Then uh, you connect, uh, you end up, before you, uh, before you do open it up, you end up connecting the line with three or four little pieces here that I can't find right now. Yeah, so you put, you insert this sleeve into the line first off. You've got a compression nut. Or compression sleeve and then a compression nut and that should be it really all the tools you need for this job should be a pair of spanners and a screwdriver let's see if that's going to be the case okay so there's not too much light to work with here but I hope the video comes out alright an important consideration is you gotta think about the orientation of the valve it's not just the valve but it's the bracket too so what I did was I went ahead and, and turned the valve so that it was pointing down. See that? So I'm going to make the install like this. And the valve is going to be pointing down so that I can bring the water line out of here down towards the bottom of the fridge. The water comes in from the bottom of the fridge. Now what it means here is that you see the bracket sticks out a little bit so you're losing about two inches of space as far as being able to push back your fridge but there's pretty much no way around it. You have to either lose, you know, two inches this way or two inches that way. And I don't think you want the fridge bumping into this part of the valve. You know, if it hits here, it's not gonna do any damage, but here it might do some damage. So, so adjusted it so that it's uh, gonna be in here, right here, uh, opening down. And I think we can go ahead and start to screw it on now. Let's see how this goes.
So at this point, I think the most important thing is just to put a uniform force on it so that you're not squishing it more on one side than the other, because if you do, then you're gonna warp the needle or you're gonna warp the whole system. It's not gonna seat properly. This has to seat well to, uh, to make sure it prevents leaks. So once we get it just snug so that it's touching the, the PEX pipe, then I'll just do a few turns on each side and make sure we're not closing up too much one side or the other. It's still quite a ways before it's actually on the pipe. Just want to keep it nice and flush. Right there is a good positioning. So we'll bring the bracket to the valve. And there it's starting to snug up. So we'll even off the two screws and then start bringing them both down a few turns at a time. You can start to feel the resistance and you know that you're on it. Now it's hard for me to know how much is enough, right? I think if you can st you can start to feel that you're compressing the PEX line, then you're more than snug enough. Like it's snug right now, but I'm going to give it a few more turns. And obviously, I think that if if you open up this valve and you get water leaking from here, then obviously it's not tight enough. But it looks pretty uniform. The distance between the two. The two brackets is uniform on both sides, so that's a very important thing. Okay. That washer is squashed pretty nicely in there. I'm going to give it three more turns on each side. Three and a half. And now I'll just start to pinch the, the valve and see what happens. Wow, that's scary. Okay. So it's obviously worked. So you saw, I didn't expect it to happen, but a bit of water did come out. First air started coming out and that's probably because there's some air in this line because it just finishes, it ends right here, right? So uh, the air started coming out, I started getting anxious, but I kept going. And then when the water started coming out, I didn't overly panic because I knew that if I could continue to close the valve, it should close and that should be it. So the valve is closed, it's not leaking. The, uh, the washer here is not leaking, so I think right now it's a success. So now I'm gonna clean up a little bit down here and then I'm gonna connect the, uh, the water line to there. And what I'm gonna do is connect the water line then I don't need all 25 feet of it, so I'll connect it. I'll maybe leave about 10 feet uh, so that I can have enough room to uh, bring the fridge out. And then what I'll do is I'll connect this side first only, and I'm going to open that valve and run it for a while. I'm going to run the water and rinse it in my sink just to clean out all the uh, dust and the, you know, the manufacturing debris that might be inside that line. I'll try and figure out a way to do the same with all the fridge lines, but at least if I do it with that, that's less of that junk that's getting in our system. So I'll be back with you in a sec. Okay, so I'm ready to connect the water line now. And honestly, I'm a little bit nervous about this because what I find with these compression fittings is you gotta be really straight, right? So this junction has gotta be really straight. And I like the angle that I left myself here because I can come in at it from below quite easily. And, uh, and you've, again, you've got to measure how much you tighten the darn thing, right? Because you've got to tighten it enough to compress everything, but not so much that you squash everything. And that's really just goes by feel. There's no other way to do it. Again, the beauty is that I can test this now, run it into the sink, and see if there are any leaks. And if there are leaks, then I can deal with it. If there aren't leaks, it's, it's a success. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the hose first. We're going to put the sleeve inside the hose. And then we're going to run the nut over the sleeve 
and the compression sleeve, I think it's called, I don't know, over that as well. Wow, that's a tight fit. Oh, that's perfect. So you see, all this has just got to go together, nice and level. I'll start threading it with my fingers so that I don't, uh, don't thread it. And then we'll just finish it off with the spanners, and that should do it. Let's see. It sounds easy enough. It really isn't an overly complex thing, but it's always got its pitfalls. Everything always does, right? So that's it just hand time. That went on really nice. That felt really good. Using a half inch spanner here. I gotta be careful because I got this valve here. This whole system doesn't seem overly robust, but this is what's used basically in everything from your heating and air conditioning to humidifiers to, well, your fridges, right? So it must work okay. It was 19 bucks, 19.99 at, uh, probably get this at any hardware store. I got it from a parts store specific to KitchenAid. And um, it really should do the trick. Okay, I'm going to give it a couple more little turns there. It feels pretty secure, but it's just a little little awkward here because everything <coughs> excuse me, everything seems to be in the way right now. <coughs> One more turn like that. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to do any more. <coughs> excuse me. Now I'm going to cut this line at 10 feet. I'm going to open up the valve, <coughs> oh gosh, run it in my sink and see what we got. Okay, so it's a moment of truth here where we're going to uh, <coughs> open up that valve and run this line. I cut it at about 10 feet and run it into the sink here. Where is it? There it is. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just check for leaks and uh, just drain the line so that um, so that all that manufacturing dust and debris gets out and is no longer done. Just slide something on top of this, shouldn't take much. And we'll see. Here we go, here goes nothing. Okay, naturally, the water line spilled. There was a decent amount of pressure on that, enough that it pushed over my little temporary brace there. Sorry about that bad filming. You can see, you can see the net result, right? It's water coming out of this hose and there are no leaks. Fantastic. Okay, so I'll open it right up here. You can really hear it flowing through there, can't you? Still no leaks there. And still good water flowing here. So we'll let it run for a few minutes and then to connect this to the fridge it's exactly the same thing. There's a line at the bottom of the fridge which you can't really see all that well right now. But there's a line there with the same thread and you just put the sleeves, compression sleeve and nut on it, tighten it up <clears throat> and then Bob should be your uncle. You should have water and ice in your fridge. Okay now we're at the connection to the fridge and it looks like the only difference with the fridge side is that there's no uh, ferrule that sleeve that goes inside the thing. It looks like it's just calling for the um, the compression nut and the compression whatever this thing is to go in. And maybe that's because this this is steel down there. I don't know, but I'm going to try it. And obviously, if it leaks, I'll stop it and uh, and go get a ferrule because. Some diagrams say you need one, some say you don't. Like the fridge one says you don't need one, but the actual kit says you do, but there isn't one in the kit, so there you go. All right, so we're just uh, putting it in like this. It will give a bit of extra room there. 
and we're just going to feed it in as straight as possible through the through this pipe here. We'll give it just a bit more space. And just feeding it in until it stops and then pushing this nut in and just trying to make sure we go straight without threading at all. And then if it goes on nicely, which it's not right now, If it goes on nicely, then we'll finish with the uh, with the spanners. Hmm. It's not seeming to go on, so I'm going to try it just like this, just to make sure that this is happy. Yeah, it's happy with that thread, so that's fine. So it's just a question of lining it up. Again, that is usually the challenge with these things. They have to be lined up perfectly to go on, right? And it's difficult because the tube has a natural bend in it, you see? So it doesn't want to go in straight. The other thing is I'm working very low here, so if I continue to have difficulty with, uh, with doing this, what I may do is just unscrew this fastener here that, that holds the fridge line there and bring it up so that I can work at a more decent height and maybe a better angle. I do is I unscrew it and then feel the threads click and then try to tighten it there but it's not working this time. Let's try and change the angle here a little bit. No, it's not happy going in. So I'm going to undo this screw, pull this out and work at a bit better angle. Okay, so I brought it out to a better working angle here, and it seems to have worked a lot better. Another thing I did was I noticed that I put the uh, I put the copper compression sleeve on the wall side, and I read the instructions again, and actually suggested that you put the plastic one on the wall side. So I swapped swapped them out, put the copper one on here, and it seems to have a pretty good fit. I'm just going to give it one last squeeze. And then I'll open the valve up and hopefully it doesn't leak. Then I'll turn the water on in the fridge and hopefully it won't leak. Let's see what happens now. Turning on the valve. Well, it's filled up. It's not leaking. And it looks pretty good. So, looks like that's it as far as... Uh, hooking up your uh, water and ice line. It's not a difficult job, you gotta get the kit and you gotta have a little bit of time, but it really didn't take all that long. As long as you run water uh, close to your fridge or within you know, 18, 19 feet, you're okay. So I hope you learned something. I hope uh, you can do it and it works out for you like it worked out for me. Thanks for joining me.